Clear the Wild with Matt Becker, John Norris, and Greg Shaley. Hello? Hello? Hello there. Hey. <laughs> What's up, guys? You know, John, it's uh, beautiful out. It's so gorgeous. John, you sound like you're, uh, you've done something different. Are you on your phone? I am on my phone. Because I'm not so. Is this better or worse? What That's do you want? Fine. Right? That's fine. Okay. I just need to know what's happening. I'm just trying, you know, because uh, the last couple weeks I've had like dogs in the background. So now I'm sitting in my car on my phone. <laughs> and well, I still. You're Greg on the road. Greg on the road, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I still don't have a microphone. I got to order a new microphone. What happened with the other uh, one? It just stopped working. Whenever I connect it now, um, it recognizes that a microphone's plugged in, but it stops uh, being a microphone. Hmm. That's what happened to mine, John, and I dropped it like twice, and it works. <laughs> I don't. You mean you fixed so, it? I don't. I mean, I don't know. You'd write a book about that, but yeah. Troubleshooting. Step, step one: Butterfingers. <laughs> <laughs> step two: Repeat step one. <laughs> Repeatedly until it works. Step three, this is why you don't have kids. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, that's the bit I did. I was talking about my dogs on stage the other night, and I was talking about how, like, I realize I'm a terrible dog owner, but one great thing I've learned is that I should not have kids because I will definitely shake a baby immediately. Because I have been shaking my dog until it stops barking. But uh, uh, what, what was, what's the, uh, the goal in shaking the dog? Uh, to make myself feel better because oh. it doesn't really make the dog stop barking. No. And so far, I can't tell any uh, lasting damage done to the dog. Does he bark when you shake him? I think he likes it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I'm thinking. I think that might be when, why they start taking Dalmatians on fire trucks. They're like, shut the fucking dog up. I go, put him on the truck, drive him around the block. So I say it's a win-win for both of us because I feel better if I'm physically taking my aggression out on the dog and the dog feels better because he's barking like crazy. And gets attention. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, all right. Well, look at you. A regular Caesar Milan. The, the uh, exactly. Chihuahua I'm- Whisperer. I do, I do like to whisper in his ear, I'm going to take you back to the pound <laughs> while I'm shaking him. Well, uh, John, welcome. Uh, Matt Becker. Thanks. Hello. How yes. are you? Fantastic. Uh, getting ready for uh, – I, I do have an, an insect update. I was, uh, I was a little bit late. You guys called me this time. Uh, I was looking up uh, the grasshoppers we have right now. Uh, you, you walk uh, anywhere outside – and it sounds like someone is shooting airsoft pellets at you. There's just a poof, 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 and it's all the grasshoppers just jumping and then hitting the leaves as they uh, oh. clumsily land. Um, you need to get one of those big iguanas. That, 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 <laughs> boom, uh, what are they? No, no, uh, the ones with the sticky tongue. Just damn, damn, damn. Chameleons, yeah. Yeah, chameleons. Well, okay. Chameleon, yeah. Then, then what happens when we've got we're over with chameleons? That's we've we've uh, we've traded up to a larger species. The grasshoppers. What eats? What eats chameleons? <laughs> Cats. That's all. Yeah. 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 Uh, Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me on this one. <laughs> but the uh, grasshoppers we have out here uh, in town are a little bit different than the ones just outside of town, where all the agriculture is. Uh, heading out. So you to, have city. You have city hoppers. Oh yeah, the city ones are townies. Are, the, the townies are fine. I got no problem with them. It's just a lot of them, and now they're starting to die off. So there's like piles of them, and then the, going through, uh, getting up to the ten freeway from where we're at. You know, it's it's quite a haul, and if you uh, end up going certain directions, there you go through an area where there uh, can be at times uh, a bunch of them crossing the road. And they're different grasshoppers. They're the, the country, the country grasshoppers. They're called horse lovers. And they are huge and cannibalistic, it turns out. So when Did you say horse horse lovers? Horse, horse lubber. Horse L-U-B-B-E-R. Like you land lover. Like a, like a land lover, but a horse lover. Exactly. Huh. And the <laughs> <laughs> the uh the, the horse lovers. They're they're much bigger than the uh, city, 
the, the city uh, grasshoppers. City for, lovers. For, city for, lovers. For lots of reasons, right? <laughs> uh, but we found out that uh, once you – I mean, you hit them. <laughs> you just roll through them. But you hit them, and then the other ones that are crossing the road – are distracted and they go, oh, lunch. And then they'll go over and dine on the one that's been crushed rather than, so then it ends up just, you know, the, the, the roads are paved. The roads are paved with, uh, with the, uh, with, uh, horse lovers. Why did the, yeah, why'd the horse lover almost cross the road? <laughs> <laughs> so, so does everybody just have like, it looks like somebody was uh, hitting everybody's cars with golf balls, just giant fucking horse lovers. It's not flying into everything. The horse lovers are walking; they're not flying. That's the thing. They're too fat to fly. I don't know what it is. They just walk. They're like the ones in town. They're they're, they're flying around. You, you can try and catch them, and they're landing. You know, they're just dive bombing everywhere. But the the horse lovers, they're they're much bigger. Maybe they're just tired. <laughs> I just think, you know, your evolution kind of went downhill when you go, yeah, we should walk in the road and eat at each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know you can fly. Well, I'm not really concerned with that. I yeah. saw someone get smashed over You've here. Got all- well, evolution takes a long time. So, you know, cars have only been around for uh, like 100 years or so. So in another couple hundred years, these horse lovers are going to have giant spikes that just like slash tires and try to run over them. And then instead of eating the others, they'll just uh, commandeer the vehicle. Yeah, they they car, carjack people. <laughs> they started. They're going to start a chop shop. Well, we're through the uh, the uh, tussock moth. That's all done. Yeah, um, I know that's a traumatic one for you. I don't think uh, everybody yeah, yeah, celebrates yeah, yeah, it yeah. like you do. It's like it's Columbus Day. It's not for everybody. Well, they're they're they're, they're constantly raining down little shit pellets. From the uh, the mulberries that they're eating, the mulberry leaves, and then if you tr- you got to wash your 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 walks off every day, and then when that's done, you got to clean off the roof and the gutters, and in the gutters there may be some tussock moths that died in there. So that's another thing you got to look out for. Which is this is the first year I had rain gutters, and uh, that was one thing. And I don't know what it did to my uh, rain catchment system, but I'm pretty sure that tussock moth feces. Uh, probably is not good in that. In that, we're not drinking that water if uh, if uh, Armageddon comes. When we're in Arizona, yeah. John, are you going to shake Greg like your dog? Stop with the tussock moths already. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, I mean, it sounds awful. It sounds like once you get get that rash, or have you seen this? You saw. You haven't been affected by it, Greg, right? You're just no. Tracy. Yeah, it's only Tracy. It seems awful. It seems like once it happens, you don't want to mess with them anymore. But I get the feeling that it's not like a widespread problem that a lot of people are like walking around with like turtlenecks and gloves on. No, all, no, it's not all year long. John, I didn't even realize this until we had the the spate of uh, of tussock moss uh, raining down like paratroopers uh, from the from above. We have four mulberry trees around mm. just our house. So that's that's kind of we've compounded the problem, and and now you just now you just gotta keep a wide berth and uh, be aware that they they they're like ninjas that they can come from anywhere yeah. you know, and knowing full well that uh, I mean seeing it the breakout on Tracy's neck and and jaw that was enough to scare everyone into like like creating a wide berth not getting near them, so uh, yeah she took one for the team but you know you should. Uh, you should get a tortoise to eat all the mulberry leaves. That would be awesome, but the tortoise can't climb the you tree. Could, the, 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 well, <laughs> you gotta you gotta cut the branches down. My uh, my uncle used to have two spurred tortoises in his backyard and a giant mulberry tree, and uh, that he just like fed them the mulberry leaves. That's like all he fed them. That would be great. Uh, a tortoise these, would be awesome. These like two ten pound tortoises, like in one season, completely. Uh, Ate all the leaves off this sure. giant mulberry tree. I, I believe. Wait, it. on the ground, or they climbed it? <laughs> he would. He would. He would go out. My uncle would go out with shears and cut the like the skinnier branches off of the tree. So I guess they would what's, just. What's time to a tortoise? <laughs> yeah, they would just strip. They would just strip the branches, and then they uh, they take giant shits like, like a horse. Like it looked like a parade had gone through his backyard. <laughs> so that's one downside. That's a I gave you a plus and a downside. I think so you, you saw the shit physically. <laughs> it was, yeah. was it 
composty or was it fresh? Uh, it was she, composty because oh, they it, just eat leaves. Yeah, they eat, so it's very like they're vegetarians, so they're it's definitely composty. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, but I'm just thinking we could sell this on uh, one of those uh, <laughs> Kickstarter. There, it's uh, tortoise shit, and it's good. With, we feed them coffee, and then they shit it out. And oh, that's that's also how- they would also these tortoises would uh, they would hump each other, and that was like the funniest thing in the world to see tortoises trying to fuck. And they, <laughs> you should Google it. Like, watch a YouTube video of tortoises having sex because it's yeah. It's and, funny. And the- and the girls down there going, faster. Come on, faster. <laughs> faster. No wonder it takes 100 years. I'm in the middle of a race. I stopped over here to get a cup of water. <laughs> well, uh, you, you bring up composting, and uh, we have a composter here. I've been throwing all of our uh, – everything uh, organic. That Blue Apron? Every, well, every, all the, anything that I cut from Blue Apron, all the, all the waste from there, that would usually just go in the trash. And now, I mean, for the last, I started last December, I had one of these, uh, composters. It's kind of a horizontal one. You just spin it on like a, a track that it's on. So it just kind of tumbles in one spot. I've, I have put all of it for an entire year. All of our organic waste has gone in there, not to mention leaves and stuff from the yard. And the other day, and we haven't had any problems other than that one time that um, the javelina got in to the yard and was knocking it around like a, a soccer ball. That's the only time we ever had anything. And the other day, we had our first skunk. And uh, I saw him, thankfully, before he saw me. That, that is a, that is a uh, oh shit moment uh, when you realize, oh, that's... That's black and white. That tail's black and oh fuck! <laughs> you, you, you just uh, uh, it was one of those things where I'm so glad that I, I saw him way in advance because uh, I was headed right towards like my hands would have been on him had I gone to do what I was going to do, which was uh, open up the uh, composter. So that's another thing. Uh, not was not, he was he attracted to the compost? I, he was. He was a. It's a tight space in the corner that he's in, and there's cement behind him, and it's nice and warm from from the the sun all day. I don't. I have no idea, and I didn't. I didn't want to find out. I just. He's. He's. He. Uh, you might know that uh, skunks spray. Uh, they have another uh, mechanism uh, to ward off people. Before that, the uh, the the primary thing is to scurry. Or to make a noise that that scares city folk like me into uh, stopping what I'm doing and taking a look around. So thank thank God uh, the the primary defense is not the uh, the turn and spray and lift the tail. But yeah, mm-hmm. left I heard mo- they're like Asian people at bus stops. If you just don't look scared, you're fine. <laughs> Yeah, if I got one of those uh, those uh, those riot gear fucking shields in front of me, I don't. I, I'm, I'm trying to think. So we we were up to the funhouse after that, and we were talking about it. How do you get the smell of a skunk off of you? I mean, without tomato juice. Well, it, I mean, I've heard that, but I don't no, know. It's thinner. I mean, it's not a myth. It's tomato juice. That's it what really? does it. That's what makes it so funny when they sell shitty vodka and go, "It's great and bloody Mary." I go, <laughs> "If it's only good in the stuff that takes off skunk stink, your vodka sucks." <laughs> Well, I, th- I've always heard if you just soak it in a bathtub full of gasoline, that, that yeah. will take care of it. Yeah, <laughs> I like to smoke in the tub. That's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it becomes uh, pretty fucking real when you realize, oh, man, I, I certainly don't have the time or effort or money to spend on 85 gallons of fucking uh, tomato juice or, or those cans. You know, yeah. That that's that. I, my sister. Yeah, if you're in a hotel, it, you go broke. Well, no, that's where you would have to do it. You get someone. <laughs> you get someone else. If if this is like when I when I dye my hair, I like doing it at a fucking shitty hotel that has a shitty continental breakfast because I'm out of there. You know, and there, it, 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 you can take care of it really quick when you're really not worried about cleaning up. And I'm I'm not an asshole about it. But honestly, if I got sprayed with a skunk, I'd go, Tracy, book a room. And we'd go to a hotel over in Sierra Vista or something. She'd go in and get the room, and then we'd do the fucking tomato juice there. I wouldn't do it here because after no, a while, you wouldn't even say, know. It would stain your tub first. Second, most drain systems wouldn't. I mean, I know meth ruins them. I'm sure tomato <laughs> sauce would tear it up. I mean, but, yeah. yeah you destroyed your own house just yeah. because you don't want to stink. But, uh, yeah, I would definitely – the first thing I'd do is uh, I'm going to start walking – 
when get get the truck from Doug. <laughs> You'll find me on Highway 92. I'll just jump in back, but I can't stand in one place because this stink is killing me. I mean, I really thought, what do you do? What do you fucking do? You I would get one of those plastic cones like dogs have, so I wouldn't smell myself, <laughs> and then I would. Uh, oh, there's another thing. Get, get a, a motorcycle. A, uh, one of the kiddie pools. Get a kiddie pool. I mean, yeah, kiddie pool. There you go. Yeah, yeah. a kiddie pool is the way to go. Yeah, I think that would be it too. Outside, just sleep in it. Just get a oh. kiddie pool, have it on hand, get your <laughs> tomato sauce. But, and don't, yeah, don't go with spaghetti sauce. I don't think that works. <laughs> yeah. so you feel like an idiot. I mean, the, I mean, the difficult thing is you get a kiddie pool full of tomato sauce. That's going to attract more animals into the yard where yeah, you're yeah. laying. <laughs> you so just you Im- might- <laughs> if you can just imagine all these grasshoppers flying around <laughs> sitting in a kiddie pool. <laughs> <laughs> well, the real problem you have is you got bit by Italian gypsum moth. <laughs> you weren't in tomato sauce outside the sun, were you? Oh my God, no! That, it, that bakes in. That's their, that's their natural habitat. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wait till the eggs hatch. Oh, isn't that, isn't that the truth? Always wait till the eggs hatch. Yeah. Well, I, j- uh, just in addition to this, right after that happened. I was reaching for something in the kitchen, and I fucking grabbed – what I was grabbing was behind a bottle, and the bottle fell, and instead of trying to grab the bottle that was falling, I just held on to the thing I had. I mean, you make that snap decision when it's happening. You can't really stop time. It's like a cop. It's yeah, like a cop. Mm-hmm. exactly. So right then, I realized – I grabbed the wrong thing. I should have I should have dropped the baking soda and grabbed the bottle, full bottle of liquid smoke that then landed oh. <laughs> landed mm. top down on the <laughs> counter, splashed all over me, and then landed on the rug in the kitchen. You uh, should have kept the skunk because that will get rid of the smell of liquid smoke. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say, that's the only thing. Get a skunk in here and start scaring it. Cause it, oh my it's, God. liquid smoke is amazing yeah. when you use it correctly, but yeah, that smell is yeah. like, it's like a dead body. But it, I think you're only supposed to use like one drop of that stuff. Oh, it, uh, depending on it, it, its volume, if you're making something, it's like bleach. You know, putting one drop in a gallon or, or five gallons to to disinfect that is really enough. And liquid bleach, John, you're right. It's the same thing. You you have always. You can always add. You can't take it away. Literally, I, that's where we're at right now. Is trying to take <laughs> it away. So now your kitchen smells like a savory house fire. It is delicious, and then but it's 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 a false sense of deliciousness because I go in there and there's not a ham hock in the oven. <laughs> there's no barbecue happening. It's just a, a, a rug. The, the, now the cat comes in and rolls around in it, like in that spot. <laughs> the cat never rolls around in the kitchen. Meatwig, Doug's Doug's cat, never rolls around the kitchen. The last two days, today I put it together, has been rolling around in that exact same spot. I'm going, of course it's delicious. We all love that smell. Yeah. So I get, I gotta find some skunk, some skunk lots of, odor. Lots of lots of smells to deal with uh, in your neck of the woods. Greg. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, John? Where are you parked? Uh, I'm just in front of my house. I'm still Wi-Fi connected. <laughs> That's gotta look weird. So now <laughs> I'm in my I'm in my Volvo uh, recording booth. No, that's good. Isolation. Yeah, the, the neighbors think you're cheating on your girlfriend, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Is that why my neighbor lady is always in her car talking on the phone? <laughs> that makes total. I. Now that you say that, I'm putting a lot of stuff together because whenever I bring my dogs out, our neighbor lady is always in her car talking on her phone at like forever, at like 11 p.m. at night. Like, what is she doing? Maybe that's yeah, where we know what she's doing. Maybe, Maybe that- she's on a podcast. I don't know. I don't yeah. want to start throwing. <laughs> she's got a podcast around. called Not My Husband. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's where she gets uh, your Wi Fi best <laughs> in her car. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I think, you know, I share my Wi Fi. I think it should be free. I know. I love it. I have a donation box in front of my house. Put the waggy things up and say, oh, FBI surveillance and all that stuff. It's so funny. <laughs> They're easy to crack. It's just always their phone number. <laughs> there you go. That was brilliant. You guys, I'm assuming you guys read the story because you're much more, you're more avid news readers than I am. 
But uh, the 2017, I did a rod. Um, multiple dogs found to have uh, been given some sort of performance enhancing drug. Like what? Spinach? Uh, they aren't. <laughs> they, I know. They Isn't that great? They won't say who, the, who it was. Yeah. And they won't say uh, what it was. They won't say what it was. And, and that just tells me it's, uh, what's his name? Lance Mackey. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's, yeah, it is one of those things like, well, just fucking don't say anything at all if you're not going to give us any details. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Trump's thing. Oh, it's, wait, you're going to see. You're going to see. Big news coming. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Either say it or don't, you know? You'll have an audience. Uh, Greg, they cut the purse this year for the Iditarod. They cut it $250,000 out of the prize pool. So oh. now people are spending money to, like, blood dope their dogs or whatever <laughs> no, so, they can they win assume, less, so they can win less money. They assume this will get the drugs out of the sport because they won't be able to afford them. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to whittle them down over the next couple now of one years? Guy goes, he goes, it's not like we can get paid that much. We have to train all year, and then we do this, and it's 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 it's, it's a lot of work. And he goes... I got more in food than if you take like 40 second plays. He yeah. goes, I don't think I'm going to do it anymore. And so only might- one, only one person gets like a truck and some cash. I think like the top three people get cash. Top first guy gets cash and a new truck. K well, shirt. Every, everybody, <laughs> a K well shirt, uh, everybody else. Maybe they get like some free ride tickets for rendezvous, but I don't think so. Uh, they get, uh, from like, fourth place to like 72nd place all those people get nothing and have spent just as much money feeding their dogs all year yeah i mean it, it yeah that's expensive the baseline the the uh, barrier to entry is expensive to begin with because everyone has to feed their dogs and have a team that runs and a way to get them there that's the bare minimum well nobody just to gets compete. the fact Nobody, you're missing the big point. The big point is, even if you lose, 100% you lose, you're in Nome when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's $100 a pack. <laughs> what? How many you got? Nine. Okay. Oh, eight? Seven. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of it. If they were smart, they'd go the other way. They'd be home. <laughs> yeah, start in Nome. End up in there. Come on. Everyone wants to finish. Have the finish be an increase. Jesus yeah. Christ. They need help. Um, so I just thought that was fun. Mm-hmm. But we, you know, we have, our, we have our own sports scandals in Alaska. It's not really a real sport, but we have our own sports scandals. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like a dog sport. The dog, I mean, oh, come in. We're going to get, I know we're going to get lots of emails, cards, and letters, and texts about saying uh, uh, dog racing is not a, a sport for humans. <laughs> And we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll weather it's like that. Horse, it's like it's like horse racing. Like, <laughs> hey, Greg, who are your fa- who are your favorite jockeys? Who do you think are the most athletic jockeys? I I I, I think I <laughs> yeah. can. There was one Willie Shoemaker, and the only reason I know him is because he was the only one ever anyone ever talked about, and he's still not my favorite. Is that Toby Maguire? <laughs> yeah, no, that wasn't Toby. As played by no Willie Shoemaker, he was the fucking guy in the eighties, right, Becker? Yeah, he was the one. Yeah, had a bit of a drug problem. Oh yeah, ironically, they all did. <laughs> do they drug test the jockeys? Of yeah, course, of course they do. Yeah, they have a big alcohol problem too. I mean, they're they're little people, but they they drink a lot. Uh, my my uh my birth mom's uh husband ex husband uh, was a an agent for jockeys, and he has fucking awesome stories about. He represents the jockey. He tries to get his jockeys on certain horses. So he ha- is an agent has to be down in the fucking in the, the the paddock or whatever, like where all the horses and the jockeys and the trainers and everyone's hanging out at five in the morning. This fucker got up every fucking morning at the the crack of dawn, and he was just there hustling, trying to see which horse to get him on, and then having to hustle to get his guy on a horse. It was, and he had some. We drinking wine one night. He had some fantastic stories about back in the day where it was a little less regulated. People weren't looking so closely, and like people blowing things like like a blow dart, like up the nose of a horse that would end up winning. That would end up winning. 
you know <laughs> it was awesome he had some he had some yeah great but that's the thing it's the jockeys too that's why they were very competitive because you could get knocked off a horse that might show and you get a percentage of the win yeah, exactly it's like being a caddy you know exactly. involved. yeah yeah You're saying caddies aren't aren't athletes <laughs> when you talk about him trying to get his guy on a horse I just imagine a man lifting up a little, a smaller man and putting him on the horse. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was crazy because you're like, come on, and he's like, no, no, and he he'd tell the stories of what was going on, and then at what would happen was it wouldn't just stop if someone found something that was happening. They would just switch the whatever compound they were blowing up into the the horse. They they would just keep they would just it, like like athletes today, they just keep moving the bar. Well, like coaches from Miami. Exactly. You can't take this drug. You can't do this. <laughs> Anything you're not allowed to do, someone's going to find a way to get around it. So that, that, was, uh, that was it back then. Yeah, but the thing is, you always hear about the horses. Like the winning horse. I mean, the old joke was, remember, uh, you're either getting jerked off the rest of your life on a farm or <laughs> you're glue. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, that was the settings for horses. We didn't – but – you never hear about the jockeys. We should start a jockey farm where we like the winning jockey. We just jerk them off and they just sit and relax. <laughs> you jerk off little jockeys and we make a fortune rebreeding them. Yeah. And if you and if you lose, they turn you into a little tiny bottle of glue. <laughs> crazy glue. Super glue. <laughs> just crazy glue. Yeah. <laughs> Trial size. <laughs> Hey, so uh, I know you guys are you got already got your tickets. The All Things Comedy Comedy Fest, October twenty sixth through the 29th in Phoenix. Uh, Doug Stanhope podcast live at the Orpheum Theater on the twenty sixth, which is uh, well, we'll all be there for that. Uh, the next morning is the Burt Kreischer Colin Sick to Work show at one in the afternoon. So that means doors are at like noon. So. Uh, we're 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 definitely going to that hung hungover. Yes, I love Doug's yeah. idea of being the designated drinker. Oh yeah, that absolutely. Was fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Doug already announced that uh, we got Jamie Kilstein. Doug's gonna he's he he dropped off the face of the earth after a, a big thing that happened with after uh, his Weinstein incident. Yeah, and <laughs> and and then he dropped off and just started. He he's an MMA guy and doing all that, but he had. If you uh, just fucking YouTube Jamie Kilstein Rogan and you'll get you'll get the gist of what's happening. Well, Doug's got him coming in, and then Doug's got a couple other uh, guests we haven't announced yet, and that's all going to be on the twenty sixth. We're the first show, but we're all staying there for the entire weekend, uh, so we'll be around. We're going to do a couple of uh, this is unrelated to the All Things Comedy Fest, but uh, definitely we're going to be doing the uh, Near the Wild podcast out there. We're getting a Airbnb. And we'll have a little place We're to record. I'll be at the same place somewhere else. Isn't that weird? I I think we should tell people we're we are we are part of the festival, <laughs> but we're not on the schedule, and they don't really know about it. We're just kind of a unsanctioned. We you know how like at a what's let's the thing make in stickers. Austin? Yeah, let's make stickers and stick them on everything, we, like those annoying DJs that aren't actually booked. <laughs> exactly. We could book. I mean, we could just walk in with the equipment. I can set. I can put everything in. The, a fucking fanny pack. It's it's that I can I can get it down to that small. We could just record anywhere we're at in the lobby. Guys, we'll be doing we'll be doing a live show Thursday afternoon in <laughs> at Bill Burr, <laughs> at Bill Burr's podcast. We'll be in the crowd <laughs> near the wild. We'll be we'll be in the back talking real loud the whole time. Like, what is going on back there? All you hear is this guy. Go, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? <laughs> maybe I'll do a maybe I'll do a, a, a get a little banner. A little near the wild yeah. banner, yeah. Maybe we'll, you we'll, know what? Yeah, yeah. We're let's just a little podcast oh. trying to pick ourselves up by yeah, our man. Snaps. Yeah, let's make it stealthy though. Like we'll just whip it out like uh, like Baba Booey. We'll just be like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and put away, and run off. <laughs> I love it. All right, I'll get I'll get some I'll get some kind of signage because it'll only be funny if they know what we're doing uh, right before we get caught. <laughs> Yeah, I don't we'll know just why. try to hang our banner. We'll put our hang our banner behind the Bodega Boys. Yeah. In the what, what is this? <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of other shows. Bill Burr's doing one, and then there's a bunch of comedy shows. I think th three nights there's going to be actual comedy shows because there's going to be so many com comics in town, and we're banking on that too to to do some more uh, stand up podcasts as well in and around there. We're getting it out of the way first, and then we're just fucking off all weekend. So uh, yeah, we're uh, locking that. Down. Yeah, you uh, you can get tickets. 
at uh, allthingscomedy.com, and that's for the uh, the whole weekend, the 26th to the 29th. There's plenty of events happening. Check it out. Yeah. Go there. And How uh, do you get the all pass? Do you get the, there's there a pass for all of them? I don't or know. Is it, do you have to buy them individually because that's I couldn't figure that out. I, I, I went on the site just to make sure that the link worked, but I didn't go into actually buying and see what was happening. I do know that if you want to go to the comedy shows, you have to pick a specific date. But, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Right, well, if there's a, a an all like an all-weekend pass, that – Probably be kick ass. Huh. Yeah, and the other thing was, uh, yeah, because I was almost I bought the ticket for a comedy show because it was confusing, and I was like, uh, is this the podcast or is this comedy? <laughs> well, the comedy show is the comedy show, and all the podcasts are just the podcast. We, we're trying to let everyone know I'm, clearly there'll be Beck, nothing funny about our podcast with Doug Stanhope. Becker, just do just do what I'm going to do. I'm just going to tie a grocery store receipt around my wrist, and then you just flash <laughs> that real fast when you walk oh. by. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, John. Actually, we're just gonna oh. have you. We're gonna we're gonna just rent a car and then have you just record from there. Uh, be even better. <laughs> no, just we can leave, see me, John leave me locked. Park, but leave me locked in a car in Phoenix. That <laughs> sounds like a good idea. Oh, we have to crack the window and leave water, or they'll break the window, Greg. <laughs> shaking, shaking a Chihuahua. <laughs> Uh, Can't you see he's working in this fucking car? <laughs> hey, good thing they're not holding it in California, huh? Oh my god, god. country right now. That's uh, Anaheim Hills is right over by uh, by. Well, it's near it's near uh, Fullerton. How is this not really making the news more than like Trump's going to take an IQ test and fucking Puerto Rico still is the same way Puerto Rico is almost before the hurricane. <laughs> I mean, I mean, hundred homes burned in Santa Rosa. I don't know if you know this, but those are nice homes. Well, yeah. they were. I mean, yeah. Yeah. wine is going through the roof. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, it turns out uh, they're they're not uh, they don't have, they haven't cornered the market on wine in Santa Rosa. But you, rose, but you, rose wine. <laughs> I've been stock I've been stocking up on eight dollar bottles of uh, California Red Blend. So this is. My wine cellar is about to take a jump. <laughs> Your wine cellar, John. John is a <laughs> wine feels, cellar. Is that also is that also in your car? <laughs> yeah, it's, I keep it in my trunk. <laughs> Laying sideways on the back seat. There's two bottles in boxes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> For the next two years, all the reviews of California wines will be it's smoky, like Greg's kitchen. <laughs> oh, I, I, I I'm I'm working on uh, on trying to get us. Uh, into the haunt in Phoenix. There's a, a big one oh, called, cool. called called Fear Farm. You can look that up. Um, there, that's the one we want to go to, and I just got to contact them and see if we can get in there. But that, yeah, Fear Farm is definitely one where uh, we'll we'll break off and uh, we'll go out there. We'll go commando, Greg. We'll just put on face paint. The new sneak in. So Fear Farm, uh, it's it's uh, a bunch of guys that uh, that that run that thing. They're they're awesome. They've got con- they've got uh, haunts throughout the country, and uh, this is their Phoenix property, and it, it's kick ass. So uh, yeah, I'm mm. I'm gonna try and get us in there. If not, uh, well, we'll go anyway because uh, it it's that good. There's like six haunts there. Yeah, yeah, Fear Farm. It sounds. It already sounds. I'm already regretting. I'm already regretting agreeing to this. But let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna usually, be funny. Usually, I don't get nervous until I'm like in the line, and then I'm like, I don't want to do this. But now, even just hearing the name Fear Farm, I'm like, oh god, why am I doing this? Oh, it's good, dude. Yeah, there's. Uh, I can't wait. And like once again. Always get the express pass. Always get the express yep. pass. Yep. Yes. I, uh, so, oh, speaking of express passes, uh, have we talked about Movie Pass? Did I tell you guys about Movie Pass? What's that? So that is the thing that the Netflix, the guy who started Netflix, started a new company called Movie Pass, where you pay nine ninety nine a month, and they send you a card, and you can use that card to go to one two D movie every single day. What? It doesn't matter the it doesn't matter the movie. Yeah, so I have I have this card now where I, I used it for the first time last night. I went to our uh, Century 16 theater and I checked in for the movie I was going to see, and then it says successful. Go get your ticket, and I just swipe it like I would a regular debit card, and they give me the ticket, and then I see the movie, and I just using it once. I already saved seventy five cents, and I can go back and use it you, like once. Do you per have day. to? Do you have to show your ID? No. Oh, so I could oh, use your pass, yeah. just not so, on the same yeah, day. Yeah, I think I think you have to use my. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I what? think the app has to be like within a certain radius of the theater. So, like, if I went with you to the movie and then left, yeah, then and then leave. left, and, and then, then I you go totally in. Do it. Yeah, 
Okay, we're doing it. Yeah. Okay. We won't go we, to the movies we, together. It'll be fun. I mean, we can, we can do that. Sure. <laughs> I'll give you my I mean, Netflix pass. I'll give you my Netflix pass. You know, then, Netflix, so I give I you, I'll movie. give you my movie pass, and then I'll just buy a ticket and come sit behind you in the theater because I also want to see the movie. I can't just raise it. That defeats the we're purpose. Leave it on this. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it took a long time to get my card because um, – so this service has existed for a while, but it used to be $35, and they just dropped it to $10 a month. Yeah. And when they did that, like, half of the country signed up at once. So it took a long time to get my card. Right, but and also was, the movie theaters now are going berserk. They're like, you can't do this. And they're like, well, sure. But I think they still get the same – the theaters still get the same amount of money. And then, uh, you know, I bought, like, a big water instead of a small water. <laughs> so they're, like, going to probably make more money. And I guess the re- the way MoviePass is going to make money is just by like tracking what movies people see because now they have like more information about who goes to what movies when and they can sell I, that to whoever. I have thought that's way overdue. Like if you have a dog movie and you're in a you know whatever, even if you're a sixteen plex and everyone's going to one movie and they're not, and you got it planned at an empty theater, just be able to switch it off and go. Guess what? We got three theaters with the popular movie now. Yeah. So. Just, uh, I was skeptical, but it was really easy, and uh, now I'm now I'm all in. Now I want to go watch a shitload of movies. So I don't understand. It's for ten dollars, and you get to go see a movie every day for thirty days for a month. Well, yeah. thirty one this month. Correct? Well, okay, third as extra movie. So, but he got his card late. Does it count? Do they <laughs> prorate it? Uh, I did have to pay like before I got the card. So, but going just going once. Go to a movie last night, like playing regular price. It was a uh, ten seventy five, so I already saved seventy five cents. But they're banking on the fact that eventually, it's like the gym, John. They think it's like the gym. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's they. They've even said that they they know people like will get the card and be excited about it, but then eventually they'll fall into like you know going a couple times a month. Yeah, and it's just and, you, right? You can't bring a friend. No, yeah, they, it's just one. They ticket. have to get their own. Yeah, they have to see, get their own. That's the scam right there. See, because then you go, oh, I'll bring my girl, and then she's like, well, she's ten seventy five, and you're a dollar. You're like, oh, that got ripped off there. So now you, <laughs> now you're not around. But the movie theater is going to win because you walk in there and you buy anything. You buy anything for concessions. But the movie theater is going to win in the long run because you're gonna, your girl's going to leave you because you're always at the movies, <laughs> and then you're just going to be a loner with a couple dogs barking at home, <laughs> sitting in your car. <laughs> Well, hey, you know what? I love I love going to the movies. I'm a I hear you. It's tough. I'm just saying it's it's a good service. It's you guys should uh especially you Gray, you you go to the movies fairly fairly often. Well, he's John, in Bisbee, Arizona. I have to drive 30 minutes just to get to a movie theater, but then I just got the Apple, the new Apple TV. Uh, well, never mind then. Wow. I can get any fucking movie anywhere from the theaters. I uh yeah there's a lot of there's a some weird stuff going on with this thing. It is it's fucking awesome. So yeah, uh, I don't think it's legal, do you? I I I'd, I'd, I'd still go. I'd still get this movie pass. The only thing I don't like is the uh that subscription monthly is basically going to be like 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 they said th- after a while you'll you'll back off a little bit, but I mean yeah. I I I bought a subscription to CISO because they bought an ad on the Stanhope podcast and Stanhope's uh, release went out on that, and then I forgot that I had it and I go oh well, you know it's comedy you know, I watch Harmon Harmon Town or Harmon Quest I watch Harmon Quest yeah. on that watch a couple of other things and then CISO went out of business a couple of months ago I'm still getting charged for that fucking <laughs> yeah and i'm like well that i think i finally canceled CISO like a, a week before they went out of business yeah. but but now I, who am i i don't even know what i'm paying for right so well, yeah there's probably just there's just like one old snl clip on there <laughs> <laughs> uh not jimmy fallon it's, yeah. it's like the, the cowbell one that's it well it, it is pretty good so i'll go one more <laughs> i'll go one more month one more month <laughs> I like – we have a Roku, and I really like how easy it is just to get a, every movie you want nowadays. But I still like going to the theater yeah. and, uh, you know, just being around people to watch a movie. You could but just let night, people in your house, John. And then, <laughs> but, the but last night we went to the, a movie, and um, at the beginning of the movie, I just kept hearing this like – it sounded like there was like a generator just outside the theater. 
And there was just like that constant like motor humming. And, and me and my brother were looking at each other like, what the fuck is that noise? I'm going to complain. I even like was to saying very loudly, like, what is this noise? Hoping that the theater would come together and investigate. <laughs> or that no, so- someone else like, behind you would go, he's right. And then they would go complain. You just didn't want to get up. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was hoping. And then halfway through the movie of like, you know, trying to ignore it. I realized that the person sitting directly in front of me had like a breathing machine. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, I'm just like that jerk behind him. Like, what is that noise? Oh my God. <laughs> Get your emphysema lungs out of here. I'm trying to enjoy a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the writers would have put a guy with emphysema in the movie if he thought it was necessary. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's why I felt like a real, real asshole, but it was, uh, and once you know it as a person's medical condition, it's much easier to ignore. No, that's bullshit. No, no it's I still bugging that. you. It's, it's like you knew you had that when you came. Well, that's why they came on like a Monday night to a movie that's been out for like five weeks. So. Yeah. No, it's because they got movie pass. <laughs> <laughs> We can you ruin someone's. Everyone said. We can ruin someone's movie experience every day for the same ten dollars. That's awesome. They used. To, my they used family to hates me. me. They used to charge me for two seats: one for me, one for my oxygen tanks. But now I got movie pass. <laughs> the gummy bears get caught in my air pump. <laughs> get my pokey stick. I gotta. I gotta dislodge a gummy. <laughs> Scratch my back. <laughs> well, that's great, John. Ooh. That's great. You're ma- making friends and going to the movies in the dark. Yeah. The, the movie, <laughs> the movie theater out here that we went to to see uh, War for the Planet of the Apes. Uh, it was three people. It was myself, Tracy, and then the gal who works in in the shop, uh, Denise. Uh, we walked in at I think four something, four o'clock. Uh, the guy behind the counter uh, made me a margarita. And uh, the girls each had wine. And then uh, we went into a completely empty movie theater, watched the movie. I felt like I could have asked him to put it on pause while he made me more drinks, but I felt that was a – we just met, so I I didn't want to push it. (laughs) But the movie theater in the afternoon, they have have a bar there as well as regular concession stand. And it was just – and this was the week after it came out. Uh, it was fantastic. I I would I wouldn't even want to to get the movie pass. I would rather just go be able to go to a movie and you can you can you can just talk about what you see and if you see something that you want to talk about, you're not bugging anyone. The emphysema lady would be perfect here. She could be there all by herself. That's what's gonna happen to me next time single, I go. Single <laughs> single serving movie theaters. Yeah, it felt like a screening room. You know. Yeah. But that's a. Uh, uh, that movie pass, I'm going to look into that. I, I'm, I'm, look into it. It's, I'm reticent it's, against the. It's cheap enough that it's a it's, thing. It's cheaper than CISO. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Because there's it's nothing. It's cheap enough that you can just keep paying for it and forget about it. Yeah, there's at least a payoff on, on, uh, on this one. With CISO, there is nothing. Literally nothing. I watched two. I have, so I think I paid CISO like $115, but I watched two comedy specials, so. Not what, bad. So, so is that worth it? <laughs> no, well, no. I mean, I no, not even. It would have been cheaper. It almost would have been cheaper to like fly to to, to busy for Doug's to watch it in person. <laughs> well, they're 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 having you consider value, John. If nothing else, true. Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, I got. I'm gonna make a note of that. I need to make sure we're. I cancel that probably with the credit card company now at this point. I'm pretty sure there's no one answering the phone at CISO. Yeah, <laughs> call CISO. That'd be funny. It just rings. It's like, hello? <laughs> How'd you get this number? <laughs> it's, I, it's, just a, it's just a voicemail. You've reached CISO. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> uh, no, at this point, it's you've reached Carl. <laughs> <laughs> they've, already, they've already sold the number to somebody else. It's the last guy. Yeah. Have you tried the uh, Taco Bell uh, egg sandwich uh, ch- uh, breakfast thing where the egg is a shell? The naked egg taco? No, I have not. Yeah. That's, that's, that's got me fascinated. It sounds real. It sounds paleo. It, it, well, it, you know, they, they show this greasy egg. It's the taco. And they show a perfect uh, egg yolk. On that thing. That's what I want to get it for. To they, find out if they scramble or not. But you look at it, Becker. 
Take a look at that thing. That thing is not a fucking yoke. A yoke has a fucking kind of a, a con, a convex to it. It kind of bubbles up a little bit. That thing is like someone spray painted a circle yellow on a greasy fucking pepper stain <laughs> egg taco. And that's the bullshit dinner. thing. Yes, but they do that. I know why they do that. It's that they want to drive home the fact that it's an egg. But come, give me a fucking break. They're they're doing that, but it's not going to look like that. And I have been fooled by fucking Taco Bell before for breakfast with that fucking waffle taco thing they did. That was an, an absolute abortion. It was there the the uh, south of the border uh, response to the, uh, the that 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 pancake one. The the egg McMuffin with a pancake. Oh. Greg, you know what they said? McGriddle. It was, a, it was, a, it was the to, south of the border. Crack. It was the McGriddle. They tried to do a, a south of the border McGriddle, but they forgot to put anything Spanish in it, and they put a fucking waffle, and it was horrible. Well, you have to crack a few genetically modified <laughs> eggs to make uh, to make a breakfast tortilla. That's what they always say. <laughs> to make a delopoli. Yeah. <laughs> you have to go to Harbor Freight and get a couple of uh, air compressors and uh, 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 airbrush guns to get those fucking to really get it down uh, to get the that new circle. Guys, not put yellow stickers on right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it'd be like that rice paper, that uh, Japanese candy with the rice paper. You can eat the the packaging on the candy. You know, like, like, I don't know what it. It looks like a Jolly Rancher, but the the the, the packaging on the outside, you can actually eat it. Uh, that's what they're doing. I they're, remember sugar straws. You ever remember sugar straws? Oh yeah, you eat yeah. The straw when you're done. We st- yeah. I don't remember eating the straw. The paper ones, the Wait. pixies. No, they were a sugar you, straw. It was made of sugar, and you could just use it like a straw. And it was hard candy and. By the time you're done with your drink, you can eat the straw. <laughs> that was back when we cared about the planet. Yeah. That's back when dentists were creating all candies. <laughs> like, what would fuck up people's teeth the most? <laughs> the American Dental Association was a lockstep with, uh, with uh, the Kit Kat manufacturers. I remember I never, ever almost choked to death on candy when I was a kid, but th- it was only at the dentist where they gave you the one that had the loop on it. Oh, the, the, the sucker yeah. with a loop on it. Yeah, the little sucker with the head of loop. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. I, and I go, why is there a loop? It's weird. And they go, it's in case you swallow it. They can pull it back. <laughs> like a- I was fucking around, and I almost choked to death on the loop. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was going, uh, who swallowed it? <laughs> when, I was, when I was a little kid, I, we were leaving a restaurant. with my mom and some of her friends, and we were leaving a restaurant. I think I must have been like four. This is one of my earliest memories. <laughs> Uh, I had one of those like root beer hard candies that are shaped like a little root beer the, barrel. Uh, barrel. Oh. It's a root beer barrel. Yeah, yeah. shaped like your, a small child's neck. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I definitely started. A little cho- bit I definitely wider. started choking on. I definitely started choking on that, <laughs> like turning blue. And my mom had to like, like jam her finger, her index finger down my throat to like hook it out, and uh, and I and then I shit my pants. So it was a good. <laughs> That's a good candy for kids. <laughs> so your mom knows a different story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she'd tell this differently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you ever tell you you almost died or you just shit your pants? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how does the story I mean, start? Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, son. We're all, we almost died of embarrassment when you shit your pants. We get it. Yeah, there's here's actually. How I found, here's how I found out exactly what will happen when I when I die. I will shit my pants. That's what's going to happen first. <laughs> hey, hey, Becker, John, John has actually two stories that he can top. He can pick which one he says, oh, yeah, well, this happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw my life flash before my eyes and my dinner flashed in my pants. It was a good, <laughs> good time. <laughs> Thank God there were thrift store pants. Yeah. <laughs> if they weren't, they they became thrift store pants after I shit in them. Hey, but before we wrap up, let me just uh, run through these dates for Stanhope. He's going back out on the road. I'm not going to be out there with him. Uh, November 9th in Chicago, the 10th in Philly, the 13th in Seattle, the 14th and 15th at Cobb's Comedy in San Francisco, and the 17th in Washington, D.C. And Tracy and I are going to be out there for the Seattle and San Francisco dates with the Brechels. Brett Erickson and Karen oh. Mitchell. Woo. They'll be at the San Francisco ones. So I just want to slide that in there. Give uh, our buddy Doug a little uh, plug from the uh, seven or eight listeners we got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we need every near the wild listener to buy a ticket and 
all wear your shirts. You guys all have to wear your Near the Wild shirts when you go. <laughs> yeah. I already know there aren't that many shirts sold. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 your hard, shirt, that's hardly a call man. to arms, John. <laughs> That's not even a, a militia. <laughs> that's not. That's not even a a a a, a, a response to a a, a, a poorly uh, poorly advertised crappy taco breakfast at Taco Bell. That's just you not know even- what? No, <laughs> I got it. I got it. What you do is you go to all these podcasts and you do not wear your near the wild shirt to show your support. <laughs> to show your support. <laughs> so every time you see someone not in it, that's how you protest. That's a that's a near the wild fan. Yeah, that's a whisper campaign, Becker. I like that. <laughs> see everyone here? Yep. Followers. Not one shirt. They not listen. One shirt. See. <laughs> <laughs> But you should all still order the shirts. Just yeah. Oh, yeah. if you don't wear them, I'm ready. But yeah, leave them at home. Oh, and Ralph May, Ralph May, God love him. Oh yeah, yeah. That was rest, rest in peace. Yeah, uh, I've been catching up on a lot of Ralph May specials, his uh, Netflix specials, both amazing. Yep. And uh, you know, uh, Ralph May stayed uh, at my place when he moved to Los Angeles. He was sleeping on the floor. In a uh, at uh, I forget whose house I I swear it was like Mencia's or somebody but he's sleeping in the entryway of the floor because he didn't have a place to stay yeah so then I was going to Alaska so I said you can stay in my place and then I was going out for a summer pretty much and then I stayed but he stayed there and the funny part was is about a week and a half after I was there I got a phone call and it's Ralphie May and he goes hey Matty uh your uh your futon it was all fucked up man it it, it broke. <laughs> <laughs> I go, no, it wasn't. He goes, yeah, it broke. Well, I mean, I don't know what you want me to do with it, but it broke. <laughs> <laughs> what have to do with the back to 800 pounds with it, Ralphie? He goes, no, man, it was already broke. <laughs> you just didn't know it. <laughs> that was my favorite, Ralphie. Uh-huh. I was like, you're trying to convince me. My my futon, which I bought, like, a, you know, used, it was two by fours. I mean, yeah, it's all really it is. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's fucking one bys and, and two by fours and then a mat. And it, it doesn't ever break. It's just now it's on the floor. <laughs> uh, with the girl who's a gymnast. She didn't break it. How the fuck did you break it? <laughs> uh, I, did, I, listened to, I listened to the uh, Mark Maron interview with him that he, that he reposted, and uh, he, did, he did talk about that apartment and uh, gave you a shout-out for making him not a homeless person. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, just a, it was a great interview. Anybody who uh, hasn't heard it, she goes to it because he was a great guy. Yeah, he just he did a couple. Uh, I mean, he just did kind of like a a circuit recently where he went and did a bunch of podcasts because he uh, we we were out there earlier this year. I think it was July with uh, Andy Andrist, and uh, we we stayed at his house. He put us up for two nights. And we did the uh, uh, what the fuck was that? It was the the the, the club in Nashville there? Um, fuck, it escapes me. Zanies, Zanies, yeah, and uh, yeah, he lived he lived down the street from there, and. Uh, He's great, man. We, we just talked about this on the Doug Stanley podcast, mm-hmm. but I mean, he, he he was fucking very hospitable. Put us up. Uh, we called Bird Cloud. They lived in the area. They came over. Uh, everyone did the show that night, and we hung out for another day. It was, it was fantastic, man. So very very nice guy, and uh, yeah, you you guys have known him for years. Yeah. So, anyway, rest in peace. Rest in peace. And he did. He won the uh, the Vegas best, uh, the you know, the casino uh, best comedian in Vegas. Really? Right. Two days before. Yeah. Like recently. That was, that was the major. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Two days before he died. He won. He, he won mm. fucking top honors for the best comedian in Las Vegas. Yeah. That's why he was going to have a residency at Harris. And it was like, yeah, if, if that was the only way he was going to go out on top. I guarantee it was how. That well, was... he wasn't going to do it in bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, anyone's got anything, I got to get out of here. I think I got to do another podcast right now with Doug. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's got grasshoppers to kill. <laughs> You've listened to another episode of Near the Wild. I'm Matt Becker waiting for the Cubs to win the World Series. And I'm John Norris, uh, hoping somebody gives me a jump start soon. 
And this is Greg Shetty back in Bisbee, where I belong, uh, corralling some grasshoppers. Going to start my own uh, dude ranch. So uh, come on down. Check us out. Horse lovers. <laughs> you can charge, charge kids to ride your horse lovers. <laughs> <laughs> this is a ripoff. I'm glad I got the express pass. Hey, 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 hey. no refunds. You've been listening to the Near the Wild podcast with Matt Becker, John Norris, and Greg Shaley. Recorded in Anchorage, Alaska on Matt Becker's backyard bus. Produced and engineered in Bisbee, Arizona by Shaley. Mm-hmm.